my wine. Fuck. Hi guys, so today kicks off my April fuck. Hi guys, this is the kickoff for my April Rain Riesling and Retailing series. We are going to start right off with Spender. Spindle by Shauna Slater. Spindle is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty that takes place in the 1980s during the American Industrial Revolution. Briarly Rose Jenny is a 16 year old orphan daughter of Irish immigrants. Since this takes place during the Industrial Revolution, there are jobs for women during this time, but options are limited as to what Briar can do and still maintain her dignity and her morals intact. She has three younger siblings that she is left to look out for, so maintaining a job and providing a living for them is a must. But this is hard for her to do, especially because a lot of the job postings have N-I-N-A afterwards. No Irish need apply. Basically the only option Briar has is to work at the spinning mill. Yes, spindles are involved. Shocker. She lives in a boarding house Monday through Friday with the rest of the mill girls and then Saturday and Sunday she visits her siblings and their caretaker. The catch though is that the caretaker that Briar has found for the children is only willing to watch them until Briar's 17th birthday. At that point Briar must either be able to fully support them or have a second hand option in place for the children to go to and she's having a hard time finding some place that will, is willing to take them all together. The story also takes place on the cusp of the women's suffrage movement. So poor Briar is stuck between wanting to be a strong woman and stand on her own two feet and embrace this new mentality that you know women can support themselves, women can vote, women don't need a husband if they don't need um, if they don't want one or just marrying a good husband who will take care of her and take that burden off of her. At least until her long time beau left her for a girl that Briar works with and lives with. If this is enough, poor Briar keeps having problems at the factory with this one random spindle on her line that is messing up the whole production process. Henry, who's her best friend, usually fixes this problem for her, but he is taken off on a journey of his own and left her there to deal with it. And now she has to find a way to fix it or replace it, or face being fired. As she struggles to find a replacement spindle, she's finding out that fairies, magic, and curses are quite real and may have a little closer to her than she would like as a bunch of girls at the mill start rapidly falling ill with a sleeping sickness. Fire is definitely not a Mary Sue or a special snowflake. She is clearly having to bust her ass twice as hard as everybody else to remain on even keel when what she really wants to be doing is staying two steps ahead so that she can get a better position and earn more money to take care of her family. She's also struggling with the fact that Henry is not there because Henry is usually pretty good at providing support as well as comic relief. She didn't think it would be too much of a problem when she's left, and now she's finding herself on completely unstable footing without his steadfast support. She's completely oblivious to his feelings for her, and she friend zones the crap out of poor Henry. You know, so there are friend zones in this book. There's romance, mystery, a little bit of intrigue, as well as sleeping epidemics. What more can you ask for? This book, I just loved it. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. It really wasn't too slow but there wasn't as much action as I was expecting but it still was a very good book and dealt with a lot of issues I was not expecting like the women's suffrage, it you know being in the industrial age, it, it just there are certain twists that you just have to read the book to find out about. I don't want to spoil them for anybody. So yeah, all now 4 out of 5 stars. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching guys. Bye!